Hey everyone, this is home for me. Uh, Faller's place. There is the river, the Mbogafi, which is flowing like crazy, which is wonderful. Happens because of these massive rains and floods. And I'm here with Chief Nyamwea. This is take two because we tried to have a great conversation just a few days ago and it didn't work because of technology because I screwed up. This time it's working. Uh, Chief and his pen and he's going to take us through some very important uh, things that he's been working on for the last few years. So it's yours. Your show is yours, Chief. Uh, today I'd like to speak about something called the art of unlearning. And unlearning is basically uh, a different vision of, of learning, whereas the traditional vision of learning is accumulating, accumulating information and anecdotes, but information has become abundant. Uh, there's no real competitive advantage to, to, to knowing little anecdotes, like for example, who's the president of the Czech Republic, when the person next to you can Google and find that out in a few seconds. Um, we are finding that, and not just that, even the way the technology is changing how we work and taking away all the repetitive behavior, we are finding that more and more, in order to stay competitive, in order to be fulfilled, very important point, in order to be fulfilled as human beings, we have to find something that is a unique expression of our humanhood. And that's a very different way of learning. You're not accumulating, you're letting go of stuff, you're creating space within yourself for something spontaneous and unique and authentic to, to express itself. But when you um, say unlearning, it sounds to me like you're saying everything you learned is, um, was wrong mm -hmm. and you need to, to get rid of all that way of learning or all the, mm -hmm. even some of the lessons you have, some of the truths you hold mm -hmm. and uh, let them go and mm -hmm. start afresh. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I, will, I will share the quote from a guy called Alvin Toffler who is a futurist and he spoke about specifically the 21st century and he said uh, the key skill in the 21st century will be the ability to learn, unlearn and relearn and that's unique to a fast changing environment. You see in, in an agrarian time where the seasons were quite consistent, the environment was quite consistent, it made sense to, to look to the oldest people in, in, in the community because the environment was quite static. Actually people didn't really study change as a thing until quite recently when change actually becomes something that we could observe in our timeline. Uh, there was a time that your your life didn't look very different from your grandfather's life, but now my life looks different from somebody who was born ten years ago. Somebody who was born immersed in yeah, in, very in true. If I think about it. Yeah. My father was the first educated among the first educated Africans. Mm -hmm. His father was a chief. Yeah, you know, and living yeah. in the like village. Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. How did you get that name, Chief? Actually, oh, everyone. God. Oh God! I think, I think, I think you get set up sometimes in life. You get, you get given a name which forces you to be you. Um, Your parents named you Chief. Yes, yeah. I mean, in some contexts, it's unique. In others, it's not. Like if you go to Kisi, every so, you know, it's <laughs> it's so, not so that it's, big. A, oh really? A deal. So it's but not like those to, guys on on Facebook have these face fake titles of ambassador. Yeah. Or they give themselves things like. Uh -huh. uh, Prince so and so. Yeah. You're saying Chief is actually your real name. It's my real name. That's so hilarious. It's my real name. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so um, you're uh, about to start drawing, okay. I see. You want to clip a short video, so I'll just give you the, the, the short. This is the art of unlearning. So. Uh, I have, just like the Buddha had, four noble truths. The first noble truth is that we are all born with creative potential. And I represent that creative potential in this particular presentation as a, as a plant, as a sunflower. This is a Mr. Happy Plant. <laughs> Mr. Happy Plant, how cute. Mr. Happy Plant. Uh, you're, you're basically saying that we all have a creative ability within us we should all be out there I literally am, drawing for life and I am saying that creativity is the thing that makes us human it is a single defining characteristic of being human Without so all creativity, humans are creative you are born creative it's the reason why we pick up language the way they do nobody sat you down and say especially if it's your native language nobody sat you down and took you through the the syntax the grammar whatever you learnt by observing trial and error looking at the small mouth noises the human beings are making and they did not make it consistently but you were able to observe patterns and you know express those patterns yourself in your own unique way but that's just rep repetition no that's not creativity uh well 
or maybe it's our ability to articulate our ideas, our own individual ideas. That's it's, the creative it's, side. It's of the it. individual idea Be, because I think to me the the key difference is that when you copy something or when you relay a story, you never give the same story that you were given. If you're copying files between between two computers, you'll have a high fidelity transfer. Okay. It'll be the same file, it'll be the same music file with no loss. But with a human being there'll definitely be loss. Even if it's just in their accent, they'll definitely be a transfer. So we each have our own unique way yes. of uh, articulating yeah. and re re communicating you know what we understand and this. nature is a perfect archetype for this you look at any one of these trees not a single leaf resembles the other leaf you know, not a single one of these trees resembles another one of these trees you know this okay. is this is a very modern idea i think it has something to do with uh, with print culture after after the, the the gutenberg machine that every a looked like every other a and the idea of, of, of interchangeable parts. And then we try to do the same thing with human beings that, you know, you can have an institution and then you have interchangeable members. Like one accountant is just like every other accountant. One lawyer yeah. is just like every other lawyer. So we basically produced humans yes. to try and um, serve machines. certain purposes. Exactly. Yeah. Machines. We wanted human machines. And this is the first time in human history that we don't need human machines, which is very dangerous. Politically, that's very dangerous because we don't treat uh, human beings well when, when they don't have use. <laughs> That's true, yeah. we don't. Yeah. Um, so we are actually at the cusp of your saying a very dangerous moment because we don't dangerous or we don't hugely. capture or exploit or support, promote mm -hmm. human creativity. Yes. It's either very dangerous or very utopian. This can be a golden age of, of, of self expression and love and, and diversity and, and 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 something unlike we've ever seen. It can mm -hmm. go that way. Or it can be a a, a dystopia. Can be a complete just dystopia. explain that dystopia um take even the best well-meaning suggestions like universal basic income okay we can't employ all these people because of the artificial intelligence let's just put them all on a weight fine but you've taken away the one bargaining chip that the people always had against power against the state which was their labor if you look at all the the social movements including women's movement uh including the civil rights movement it was always anchored by muscle in labor you know like uh, african americans refusing to take buses or or, or women because they, there were so many in the factory you have that muscle when you're just a recipient of of of, of, of the grace of the state you have no oh my god you, you have, have no muscle. agency anymore. you have no agency so the creativity, I think it's a matter of life and death. Which is You're heating up. This conversation is warming you up. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay let's go to these uh, so, universal truths of yours. The first truth is the foundation. I think it's the most important foundation. We can't explore the others without understanding the first one, which is that you have this creative potential. Not every tree will flower. It's the same way as every tree. Not every tree will flower. There are certain conditions which can be put on that tree, such as lack of sunlight. Um, lack of, uh, of water, fertile soil, nutrients. water, all these things can stop the tree from flowering. But even when the tree is a seedling, the flower is an innate property of that tree. You don't wait until you see a flower to say that, that that seedling has a flower. The flower is inside that seedling. It's just not expressed yet. But with, but ah. with, uh, this, with, with this uh, nurture, the flower will come. So innate in every human being is mm -hmm. creativity mm -hmm. like a flower on a tree mm -hmm. it just hasn't yet been expressed for most yes. of us yeah it okay. has to go through this transformation so we ask the question why you know why does this creativity not come and i i take it to be three little monsters you know the first monster we can call uh, survival anxiety The second monster we can call uh, status anxiety, you know. This is some sort of a pyramid that I'm trying to draw. Uh, I'll try to be really quick with this. And the third, we can call this, uh, yes, 
Yes. <laughs> BS stands for belief systems. Belief <laughs> systems, okay. Yeah. So a brief word about all of these. Survival, nine out of nine out of ten times. Nine out of ten times when somebody tells you that they can't be creative. It has something to do with oh, you know, I have to earn a living, I don't have time for painting, I don't have time for dancing, I don't have time for music, etc. etc. Mm -hmm. I have this rule, it doesn't allow that, whatever. So nine out of ten times the biggest excuse which we offer ourselves for not expressing that potential is survival, that we have something else that's much more important that we have to do that um that is about grown-up business. This is, you know, grown-up business, we need to survive. And painting is what the children do. Um, that's, that's true. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the first thing we have to get over, yep. is understanding that... And also, we hear it. art yeah. is a luxury. Mm -hmm. Yeah, doing creative stuff is a hobby. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you do uh, mm -hmm. as, a, as a part of your personal well-being mm -hmm. or your expression, self-expression, yeah. or, or, or really of that much importance to your life. It's what you yeah. do in your spare time if you're lucky once you've been you've dealt with your your mature i don't know career mm -hmm. and other mm -hmm. i don't know but the thing the thing that we need to communicate on this level is that your survival depends on you expressing that and this is you even see this in all mammals for example look at young mammals when they come online kittens dogs what's the first thing they do they play because play is the only domain where we celebrate risk where we celebrate uncertainty. It's the only domain. When you're watching uh, a Liverpool versus Manchester United match, you don't want to know the score. If I told you the score in advance, it, it takes all the juice out of the match. Play is the only place where we celebrate, we seek out uh, uncertainty, and that's the sort of mind frame we want to be, going, we want to be in going into the 21st century. It, it's the only mindset that we will cope if we go in as kittens, if we go in as puppies, if we go in as happy plants. But if we go in with some fixed idea about what this is supposed to look like, we will wreck ourselves and toxify the whole thing and build railways through this park. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. I totally get it. Mm -hmm. uh, being creative, Actually, it's, it is quite risky and it's kind of dangerous in that you're going into a realm of something you actually have no idea what's going to come out on the other end. Mm -hmm. And especially if you go in knowing that you don't know what the end result is going to be like. I don't... Oh, okay. I might as well go to the others. So status anxiety. The second most common reason, uh, which is associated with toddling, uh, the stage when kids uh, finally stumble onto their, their feet and start using their muscles and jostling in the family structure for position. Um, this is uh, that territorial stage from about the age of two years old, which is why when you're behaving very territorial and egotistical, people tell you stop behaving like a two-year-old because that has to do with, um, you know, being concerned with status. What will people say if I'm an artist as opposed to a respectable lawyer or whatever? Mm -hmm. There are all these associations, all, you know, you grow hair down to your ass, you're, you're a drug addict, that type of thing. Right. Um, so, you know, we want respectability, we want a position in the community and um, that's something which, not the same for all people, but a lot of people feel, have the need to overcome that issue about status anxiety. The third, and perhaps the trickiest, is your belief systems, thoughts. You know, what are all the, what are your own, what what are the software programs that you're running inside your own mind that frustrate your ability to be creative? I say that, um, not just I say, all creative people will will tell you that the most important three words that you have going into any creative action is I don't know, which is the opposite of being a scholar for example there's a saying uh, in in the tao te ching, in, in in the tao <laughs> that the the scholar tries to learn something every day but the man of tao or the creative person tries to unlearn something every day you see if you're a scholar you take great pride in how many accolades and how many degrees and phd's you've accumulated and this become your this become your defense this become your buffer it's what gives you tenure it's what gives you it's it's what gives you status but if you really want to be creative, if you want to do something that's never been done before, you are by definition unqualified to do it. And, and that unqualification, that not knowing, becomes the most important asset in being able to move into these new spaces. How many times have you been in a really fluid conversation where you were really flowing on a first date with someone and um, 
you weren't planning in advance what you were going to say or you were making an internet video right. and you, you didn't think in advance what you were going to say and it just flowed, you know, it just what you needed to say was unified with the environment and it all just fed in that is the that right. is, and, and magic, it makes huh? us feel better mm -hmm. it makes us feel like we're really connecting with somebody as opposed to just reading a script Wow, so a lot to think about, uh, think about. and especially somebody like me has wasted then I feel like I've wasted ah! all those years no, they're creative oh professors. There are lots of creative professors. <laughs> it's more of an attitude. These things okay. are just a byproduct of leading a productive okay. life. But um, it's like if you're an artist, you're going to accumulate a lot of work. You know, if Jimi Hendrix was alive, he'd probably still be making music, but nothing like the music which people associate with him now. Right. You know, it would be evolving. So uh, every day I need to get up and say, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, thank you, Chief. It's been an oh, amazing um, conversation. One other thing, one other thing. Uh, my book, The Art of oh, Learning, this great. heavy thing, I'll be launching the Kickstarter on the 8th of August. You can see. Open it up, we want to see. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Let me open. You see here. We must be honest, this global transformation wouldn't be without great upheaval. This is your original artwork, this is hand the, drawn. This is the manuscript. Um, what kind of artwork do you call this? It's a... Uh, uh, this is dry brush technique. This is phenomenal. Look yeah. at that. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah. And it's... Uh, beautiful, It's, it's inspired by artwork. Kenya. It's inspired by our landscape. Um, if you've climbed Mount Kenya, you'll recognize a lot of this. If you've been in, in Naivasha... Wait, I want to see that lizard. Show me that lizard. Oh, belly the hungry reptile. Look at that. <laughs> So, yeah. so talks, um, I'm, I can get this book, I'll be able to order it from August 8th? From August 8th we start the Kickstarter to be able to print it so that everybody can have a copy. Okay.